show you how you can uh, create what we call an operator dashboard, which is essentially taking uh, ad set or any type of ad object information, uh, it's metadata and settings, uh, like targeting information or bidding, uh, budgets, uh, information, etc., and combine that with uh, some insights. So performance metrics, uh, spend impressions, clicks, any type of actions, um, and basically build a dynamic, dynamic dashboard to analyze what's going on, but also eventually to uh, use that to make changes um, from, from this Google Sheet, from this operator dashboard, um, basically make changes on the live uh, ad object. Uh, so the way we're going to start is the following. Um, so we, we're basically starting with the, with two raw exports from Facebook. And if you don't know how to get them, then probably you need to watch a different video first. Uh, essentially right now we have, uh, some ad set information exported here. So we have some, um, ad set ID, campaign ID, account ID, the ad set name, uh, it's optimization goal, uh, optimization sub event, and then the custom event type, which is basically the, uh, the optimization event. So these are just the API names. And then we have the bid amount and, uh, we also have an effective status here. And, uh, then what we have here as well is basically for the same ad sets, we have, uh, we can see we have um, data that is broken down by day. day. So we have uh, impressions, spend, link clicks, and uh, app installs. Um, I'm just going to use these um, as a starting point, but of course, any metrics can be included here. The, the most important bit would be that we don't want to use any calculated metrics because if we use calculated metrics, then averaging them or summing them up will become very, very messy and will not actually work anymore. Um, so the way that we would get started is um, we start with a new uh, uh, sheet and I'm going to call this uh, ad set overview. And so the idea is that we basically have, uh, you know, all of our ad sets here. So all of the relevant ad sets for us. And then we want to have, you know, a little bit of metadata, you know, you know, what is the bid setting, etc. And then we want to have at least one um, kind of way of looking at the performance over a certain time frame, maybe even compare two different time frames against one another. And so right now, I, I think this uh, data set is quite old. So it's from 15th of uh, July um, and before. Uh, so this won't be exactly uh, live. It's the 10th of November right now. Um, so the way that we start is basically we say uh, we need the uh, uh, all ad sets here. And we usually work with IDs. Uh, as a starting point, we don't use names to kind of combine any data. We always use IDs and any IDs are completely unique in the Facebook universe. So any ID you will ever find from any custom audience ad set campaign is going to be uniquely referred to this object. So no, if you have, if you have the idea of one custom audience, for example, this cannot also be the campaign ID in a different account. That's impossible. So every single uh, object ID is completely unique across the whole Facebook universe. Uh, so we'll start with uh, the Facebook ad set ID, and this is usually kind of the starting point. What I would do is I would just import every uh, ID that we have, and we can do this very, very simply and just say that we uh, kind of want to import this whole range here, basically starting from uh, A2 to whatever. And usually I just like using the unique formula for this. Uh, so we say we want to go into the ad sets um, sheet or tab, and we want everything from A2 till the end, uh, right? So all ads, uh, ad sets here. And so this will uh, now kind of import all of the different ad set IDs. And that's a really good starting point because we can use that as a basis to import any other data. Uh, and of course, there are multiple ways to imp import data like this. Um, so the first that I'm going to use is uh, just, you know, kind of do this via VLOOKUP, simple VLOOKUP, um, where I will uh, create the VLOOKUP and then I use the ad set ID as the search key. Um, and then I'll go into the ad sets range once again and basically use this whole, um, this whole range. So from A to E and look up any further value that I want for this particular ad set. And so I'm going to press F4, which basically locks this range. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to say in what column number is the data that we want. So um, I'm going to, okay, 
so now that we see this. Uh, so column one is basically the first column here, right? We're starting in column A, so the first column is one, column B is two, three, four, five, six, etc. I'm going to start just importing the ad set name, uh, and then we need to specify the match type. Uh, we'll just say false. And so uh, you can see now I made a mistake, so I'm just going to cut this uh, one or move it over here. Uh, and now this works really well. And so what we can do is we can just kind of, you know, either um, kind of, uh, you know, sorry, extend the, the formula into everywhere else. So now it automatically took, um, uh, you know, the, the next row every time. Uh, what we want to make sure is so if this was, you know, the ad set, ad set name, and now let's say we want to also include the campaign ID. Uh, we'll use basically the same formula. Uh, one thing that we want to make sure though is that we're still using the ad set ID as the base item to use for the lookup. Um, so something that we should be doing here already is uh, lock the column. So if we put a dollar sign before, we're making sure that we're locking the column. Um, so I just copy pasted the formula everywhere. You can see this at the top. Uh, and if I paste this over here now, as we see it locked the column so this is essentially the exact same lookup in this case we actually need to access column two though so the campaign id um i remember this from looking at this before campaign id is in column two so we want that here cool so uh, this works really well right um this is a little bit when 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 doing vlookups this works really well um something that is a little bit annoying about vlookups up vlookups is is vlookups is that we don't know what this two stands for. So we always need to go back and say, hey, what is it that you know we actually have in column two? Um, so there are uh, you know, different ways of doing this uh, as well. So to make this a little bit more um, dynamic, something that we can do, for example, is we can say, uh, you know what, let's um, add uh, one um, row up here, uh, name this, uh, sorry, give it, give it a, a, a number essentially like so, and then we copy paste this over, over here. And now we basically know that we know what, uh, what ID we should be using for all of these. So uh, I can say here, this is actually two. Uh, we already know this, this is in four, right? The ad set name is in four. And if we now maybe wanna say, we wanna get the custom event type, uh, we should be looking up um, which is basically the, the event that we're optimizing for, we should be looking at seven. Uh, so I'm going to call this uh, event optimization event. Uh, and so this is a nice way, uh, let's say we also want to look up actually the bid type, uh, the bid amount. Uh, so I'm just going to say bid amount here. Cool. And so one thing that we can do is if, 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 if this was the starting point of how we kind of built this, uh, something that we could be doing now is we could say instead of actually using two, how about we use whatever it says up here, right? And again, in this case, we want to fix the row number. So we have D4 and we want to make sure that we fix the four. So I'm just entering a dollar sign here because if we now pull this down, we want it to stay the same. So this worked really well. So it, now it doesn't say two anymore, but we know that camp we expect campaign ID to be in two. And it's a really, really easy check to see that well, you know, this is kind of the column that we're looking after. Um, and then, so the nice thing is now, once we did that, so if we had prepared this, one thing, something that we can do, we could just copy paste this all over and it will work really nicely, dynamically, because we're now taking this as a, uh, we're now taking this as an input um, to, to kind of figure this out. So something that is a little bit already annoying for us is that, um, we always need to kind of make sure that we pull down the whole formula, right? So if we now all of a sudden had seven more ad sets, we would actually need to extend this formula all the way to the bottom. And then, but if it doesn't, isn't there, now we get these weird uh, errors. So something that we can use is a array formula. An array formula basically takes uh, an array as an input. So a range of multiple, um, or a range as an input, and then basically, co you know, copies the formula over. Uh, so I'm going to show this. Uh, for this uh, ad set, uh, sorry, for, for the ad set name once. Um, so how to get to an array formula, either you write array formula at the top or you press control or command shift enter. So I just did that and it added array formula around. So for now, this won't do anything, but we basically now need to make sure that 
we give it a range as an input. So in this case, what we actually want to give it as an input is all of this. So the whole, everything from B6 to B down. And if we enter this now, we can see, even though we don't have a formula in here in, in row seven, but just in row six, the actual formula was sent all over. The only messy bit is now that we actually have this not available number here. So what we can do is um, before the VLOOKUP, either we say, let's do an if error, right? So if there is an error in the formula, then just show nothing. Uh, and I think this is usually a very uh, good choice. So now we have, uh, we're using dynamic inputs, right? We're using this number four as an input. Um, and uh, we only have this formula once. So here we have the unique formula, which is also kind of a built-in array formula. Uh, we ha only have one here. And now what we can do is we can just remove all of this because we already know this is dynamic. Do that and look at that. This works really well. So now we only have four formulas, which makes it a lot less uh, calculation heavy uh, on the spreadsheet. So this still uses uh, VDOCOPS and it uses custom uh, kind of numbers here. There's another way to do this. So uh, one really cool way to, uh, to look up these type of values is um, using the match formula. And what the match formula basically does is the following. If I give it a range, for example, I say, um, let's go here. So I need to give it a search key. I'm gonna say, I want whatever it says in, 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 in here. So F5, and I wanna search in this range. And then I just say the search type should be zero, You're usually it's zero. And so what we can see now is that, actually let me paste this over here. So what we see now is when we search for bid amount, right? And let me write this out again, bid amount. When we search for bid amount in this range, we get a five. And isn't that interesting? Well, it's exactly the fifth column that we're looking at. So um, this is actually exactly what we would expect to happen. Uh, so one way to make this even more dynamic is to actually say, well, what does it say in for bid amount here in the assets table? So it actually says this weird thing, right? Bid amount slash bid amount, blah, blah. So what we can do is we can say, copy this thing. Uh, I copied it over here. Now I'm gonna paste it here and we'll say, instead of using this weird eight, what we're going to do, right? So we're referencing the eight here. What we'll say is match this thing, uh, and again, I'm gonna lock, uh, lock the, the row and find it in here, in this whole thing. And so what we would expect is to actually return an eight. So I'm just gonna do that. All right, I can already see that I made a mistake here. So uh, I didn't properly specify this. So we need F3. So we're looking for F3 in, uh, in this, uh, in the second row of ad sets. And once I enter this, it also works really well. So what we can do now is we can say, actually, uh, let's just forget about these num weird numbers. Sorry, let's just copy paste the exact name of the column header. So this one is called campaign ID. And this one is the name. And what we'll do is we'll just, again, copy paste this over. You can see this works really well. We're not referring back to the numbers anymore. So I'm just gonna get rid of the numbers. And we can also get rid of the numbers here. And there we go. So we already have a really beautiful, a very, very dynamic uh, functioning uh, lookup here. And as you can see, if I remove it, the whole thing goes away. Um, if we want to include something else, we can. And we're just using this column, uh, sorry, this row basically as, an, as a nice way to give it a little bit nicer label uh, because of course we don't want it to say custom event type promoted object custom event type. 